Welcome back to the Fearless Future podcast. We're your hosts, Glenn Schwarm. And Amber Schwarm. And today, we're going to discuss a clip that we found online that went viral from Grant Cardone, where he said that you should not own your own home. You should rent your home. That's a terrible investment. And we completely disagree. Let's watch the clip. With a $1.2 billion worth, and you don't own a house, a personal house. I rent my house. I get a better loan on it because I rent it. I could have an LLC own it and rent it back to me, and I'd still get a better deal. Grocery store, Whole Foods. I don't buy the whole grocery store. I go get the stuff I need, and then I leave. Houses were built for banks. They weren't built for people. And then the people were lied to and said, oh, a house is a great investment. A house is one of the dumbest, worst investments a human being could possibly make for one reason. You have to pay the house. The house doesn't pay you. And if it doesn't pay you, it's not a good investment. That has to be the dumbest piece of advice I've ever heard. Grant, why would you say that to people that a house is the worst possible investment? That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's clickbait. It's nothing but clickbait. But I, and I also think he believes it, though. But that's coming from his perspective. I mean, he, he, you know, where he's at in his life and financial status, he has very rose colored glasses and can't really relate to the average person. Yeah, this is we're talking about everyday average people that get affected by these kind of comments right. that people say online. Because the truth of the matter is, is that you have to pay for housing. No matter where you live, you have to pay for housing, yeah, that right? that analogy about the grocery store was the weirdest analogy I've ever heard. I like Whole Foods and buying the- <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't buy the whole store. I just go in and shop for what I need. How, how is that I mean, relatable to buying I a house? No shit. You don't buy the whole store? All right, whatever. So it makes no sense. But we have to pay for housing in America, right? If you want to live someplace, you have to pay for housing. Why would you not want that money to go into an asset? And I, yeah. here's where I understand his point. His point is that if you're going to be an investor, buying your home is not a great investment. Right. I agree. But to tell people to rent where they live is the stupidest piece of advice you could ever give somebody. Yeah, it didn't even make sense. He said, my loan for renting is cheaper than my loan for buying the house. You don't have a loan for renting. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it makes no sense. So anyway, I, I go back to my parents on this one. Yeah. You know, when I was uh, 14 years old, 1984. We took a motorcycle trip to the top of Pikes Peak from upstate New York, four days in the back of a motorcycle, so the top of Pikes Peak in Colorado, and burned my parents' mortgage. It was at that moment in time in my life that I started to have epiphanies about home ownership. Because I remember being on the top of that mountain and asking my parents, saying, Mom, how much did you, what was your mortgage payment? It was $51 a month. Yeah. That was their mortgage payment. They bought a house in 1954 for $12,500. Boy, wouldn't that be nice now? <laughs> Well, I remember shortly thereafter when I got to be about 18, 19 years old saying, mom, your mortgage payment was, was more than my, or less, or my, my credit card payment is more than your house payment was. Yeah. So what I got thinking about the whole time was that when my parents retired, when they finally paid off that house, that was the only asset they had. Right. We were brought up pretty poor. I don't know about you, but we were brought up pretty poor. And that was, yeah. that was my parents' really only asset. You don't know about me. I mean, you've been married to me for how many years and you don't know how I grew up? Okay, that's just a little that's sad. A, that's a whole all, that's but... a whole different long discussion, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how your parents handled money in your house. I don't know how that was, but how did they handle it? They're smart ass. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. You want to put yeah. me on the spot? Go ahead. Uh, I, I, I grew up pretty poor as well. I can remember uh, once a week we would go to eat a Mexican restaurant on Friday nights and my mom and dad would split a meal and the three of us kids would split a meal. That's yeah. how we didn't have much money. But then as I got to be a teenager, we started to do a little better. But but there was never a plethora of money, no. And I bet when your parents sold that house to move elsewhere, they probably had a big chunk of change oh, yeah. that they could put down in another house. So yeah. they, they started to accumulate wealth there. Now, I agree with what Grant says. He says, if you want to be, you want to have an investment, a home is not your best investment. You want to buy something that cash flows, not something you put cash into. But here's my argument. You're going to pay for housing anyway. I agree that if you have a house and you have repairs, you have to pay for those. If the hot water heater goes bad, you're paying for it. If it needs a new roof, you're paying for it. Yep. If the plumbing goes bad, you're paying for it. That, those are things that cost money. And a lot of people aren't disciplined enough to set that money aside. But but that's a, that's a... A state of mind, like you you plan for that. Well, but hold on. Let's back up and say what that means, though. What, what I'm saying is they put money, they find money to pay for those repairs. Right. They don't, like you said, they don't find that money to, if, if you were renting. You wouldn't have to pay for that stuff. You wouldn't have to pay the for those things. The landlord pay for that. The idea is if you're renting, you take that money and put it into investments. Right. But how much could that possibly be? I mean, an extra what? Three thousand dollars a year. Not enough to make a dent. No, not really. It's not a significant amount of money. No. And so, if you're going to pay for housing anyways, why not have it go into your home 
that you are owning because you're paying down debt. And here's something that I think people don't think about. When you and your first husband, when you rented back when you, what, in the 90s? Yep. What do you think you paid for rent? Do you ever rent a house? Uh, our or... first apartment was $385. Okay. What year was that roughly? 1993. Okay. Did you ever rent a house? Years later. Do you remember what you rented the house for? Seven, eight hundred bucks. Okay, for a house. Yes. So I remember renting my first house in probably the early 90s. It was seven fifty a month over on Peter Road in Rotterdam. Yep. I remember this. Seven fifty a month was my contract to rent that house for. Back then, had I tried to buy that house, the mortgage would have been somewhere around $1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. I know that because in 1999, I bought the house that our son now rents from us. Right. Right. I think I paid sixty-five or seventy-five thousand dollars for that house, and the mortgage payment with everything—payments, interest, tax, insurance—was a thousand bucks a month. Yep. Right. At the time, my mortgage payment was more than if I rented it, because if I rented it, it would have been about seven hundred bucks a month to rent the house. Right. But the mortgage payment was a thousand. So right now you're saying, "Well, you're upside down. You're upside down." Here's what is so short-sighted about what Grant says. There is a period of time. There's a tipping point. There is. At some point, because rents increase, right? Right. Rents are always going to increase. Your rents were three eighty five. What do you right. think? That, what do you think that place rents for now in Texas? Uh, they tore, yes. The, they tore it down. I get it, it but down. work um, with me. You know, work with me. Probably eight hundred bucks. Are you high? It was a little one bedroom apartment. Where can you get an apartment for eight hundred bucks? There's was, no way. Well, it was kind of in the hood, so probably about eight hundred bucks today. I don't know where you're getting eight hundred bucks from, but okay, let's let's say you're right at eight hundred bucks. In the hood, it's where Arlington Stadium is. No, that was a different location. All right, I don't even want to story. I don't even know who you are today, <laughs> to be honest with you. You're you're all over the place. Apparently, you don't know much well, about so, me. So mo most apartments in <laughs> Dallas, I I, yeah. I think you'd okay. be hard pressed okay. to find so, a place so to rent. So a decent apartment in Dallas, you know, you're probably looking at fifteen hundred bucks a month. That's what I would say today. Yeah, I don't think any any listener would argue with that for yeah. a decent apartment is 1500 bucks a month. And you used to pay 385. Yes. So the tipping point happens when that house that I had, right? I was paying a thousand bucks a month for the mortgage payment. That included everything. Well, guess what that happens? That payment doesn't increase. Right. But guess what does increase? The rent. Rent increases. Yeah. So that was 30 years ago. That was 93, 31 years ago. Yeah. Right? For you. For me. Yes. yes. So if I had bought a house at that time, that house, that 30 year mortgage would have been completely paid off. Yes. And your, your payment would have been less than rent. Than rent. Way less. Your payment would have been less than rent, but it doesn't start out that way. Right. So when you look short sighted at that thing and say, listen, there, you know, if you, if you know, you're paying too much money, you should just rent. It's cheaper to rent. Bullshit. It's not cheaper to rent. It's cheaper in the short term. And I think that's area dependent too. There's a lot of places where it might be more expensive to rent than it is even buy. You know, in, in Dallas, where I grew up, DFW, it was actually cheaper at the time because interest rates were low. It was cheaper at the time to own than it was to rent. Yeah. So I think of my parents' house too. $50 a month was what their mortgage, 51. Did, here's a little side story. When we got back from that trip, I don't know if I ever told you this. We got back from that trip. My parents got a letter in the mail. You probably have told me this because unlike you, I know you and I've heard all of your stories like at least three times. You know, you, you, you're a wise <laughs> ass today. Why don't you tell me the story then? Why don't you finish it for me there, funny lady? Go ahead. You know what I'm going to say? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Babe. Oh, ho, ho, not yeah. so smart, are you? Well, sometimes you tell the story so many times that I tune out or I make different versions in my head. You know, I Like don't... the fence that you painted in the winter when you were All barefoot. All right, are you done? Can I go on? How many on? times did you paint that fence? Can we, get, can we get back to the topic at hand? So go ahead with your story. So my- The listeners only hear it once. My, shut up. <laughs> we got back. So my parents paid $51 a month for 30 years. We got back and a month later, they got a letter from the bank that said, we made a $1 error 30 years ago. Remember this story? No. Well, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> They made a one dollar error. My parents had to keep making that mortgage payment for twelve more months. <laughs> twelve more months they added on because they made a one dollar error thirty years ago, and no computers back then, right? Yeah. So it, they just got it, they just caught up with it and they figured it out. So all that being said, my parents' mortgage was fifty one dollars a month or fifty one dollars a month. I think the listeners have heard that about five times now. Oh my god, you're pissing me off today. Okay, so anyways, let's move along. Pain in the ass. <laughs> So, you know what? You finish the episode. Go ahead. <laughs> now, you know what? Tell your story. I'm done. Go ahead. <laughs> when he says he's done, he's never done. Go ahead. <laughs> you just keep wanting to take jabs at me today, so go right ahead. <laughs> you were in the middle of a story. Finish it. 
<clears throat> parents' rent or parents' mortgage was fifty-one dollars a month for the seventh f in time. <laughs> you done? Here we go. Are you? Oh my God! Shut <laughs> up! Seriously. So here we are. Fifty-one dollars. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> The rent back then for a house was probably, I don't know if they rented houses back then, but as time went on, when they finished paying off their house in the 80s, I looked it up, the houses were renting for around 500 bucks a month. And yet their mortgage payment was 50 because it was a steady, solid, fixed interest payment. Yep. I'm just trying to make a point that took nine years because of all your interjections. <laughs> But I just want to show you that eventually there is that tipping point that will happen in real estate yeah. if you start and start making a mortgage payment now. Because most people are never going to put aside the money that they have for repairs and put that into a mutual fund or put that into stocks. You know, when Grant says that, Grant wants you to go and invest with him. Right. And whatever he's doing he, and all the buildings. Agenda. He does. Yeah. He, he runs a giant fund that he invests in real estate. So he's smart. I mean, he's very smart that and he does that. All of these big companies, you know. Grant Cardone and even the bigger ones, you know, the the BlackRock and all those guys, they want to create a renter society. So even putting that message out there about, you know, even to our younger generation, rent, 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 it becomes the new normal instead of the American dream of home ownership. Yeah. So I, I think they should be, you should be careful listening to whatever narratives people are trying to drive down your throat and think about what's best for you. And I think right now with the interest rates being higher, you know, maybe, maybe for a time it does make sense to to rent instead of own until you have enough of you can put down for a down payment or the interest rates change. But one of our good friends, Jeff Miller says, and he's, he was a, a, in the mortgage business for many years. He says, you marry the house, you date the mortgage because right. that can always be renegotiated. You know, when interest rates do go down, you can refinance. Right. So there, there's things that you can do there to decrease your payment over. And, and that even helps even more over time. Yeah. If you buy right now in this high climate, high interest rate climate, <clears throat> you can definitely say, okay, in three years or four years, you can, you can renegotiate that lower because it will go down. Right. And if it goes up, so what? You're in a fixed rate. So always get yourself a fixed rate mortgage. Don't get a, don't get a variable, a variable rate mortgage. Yeah. Get a fixed rate mortgage so that you're locked into that payment for a long time. I think if you, you have to be able to wait to find how do you beat inflation. And so to say that you should not rent a house, I think it's just foolish information because the average person in America, they get to the end of their life and that house is paid off and it'll be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's usually more than they have in a 401k, usually more than they have in an IRA, usually more than they have any kind of a savings account because they just haven't had the discipline to put that money away. But when you're making a mortgage payment every month, you make that mortgage payment because you don't want to lose your house. Yeah. So you force yourself to make that, even if you get a second job, most people won't get a second job to fuel an investment vehicle or to give money to other funds to invest for them, but they will get a second job to pay for their mortgage. Yeah. So it helps average everyday Americans. It forces a little bit of a cushion. A few hundred thousand dollars is not wealthy but it will help the average American. Again, if you're going to just invest, I agree, a home is a bad investment. But and, and I think too, and I've said this on other podcasts, houses typically appreciate or double in value every 10 to 15 years, depending on the market. Tell me where else you can put your money where it's going to double in the next 10 years or 15 yeah. years. There's certainly vehicles you can do that in, but it just depends on, are you that savvy of an investor to know where, where to put your money and discipline it and to move it around if you need to. But, but a home... Real estate has a track record of doing that. Right. It Tell does. me where else you can see that it history does. and that kind of track record yep. and feel confident in that. And, and there are people that even market dependent, there's people here in Florida that buy their house and our house. We bought our house in what? Uh, April of 2020? 21. 21. April yep. of 2021. And I think we appreciated 20% in that first year. Yes. Yeah. So there, there are times and cycles in, in areas where it does appreciate right away too. Now, these, this makes a difference too when you're talking about what kind of house. Because if you want to buy a luxury house, you may, you may want to rent a luxury house. I'll give you that. If you want to rent a house on the ocean, it'll be cheaper to rent a house than it is to get a mortgage on a house on the ocean. This is going to be more for your average everyday, you know, four bedroom, two bath, three bedroom, two bath kind yeah. of a home. That's really where the math makes a lot more sense here is when you do it that way. Like our house, for instance, you're not going to be able to rent that house you know, to cover the, the payment on it. Right. You know what I mean? So it's just, that's, that's how that's, that's how that works. Yeah. So it's important to know what kind of house you're looking at. Yeah. And also as a renter, one thing as a renter, you're at the mercy of the landlord. So again, they say, oh, well, rent, so rent, rent where you, you know, rent where you live. Well, what if a landlord decides he wants to sell the house? I see that all the time on the next door app. People are complaining. My landlord kicked me out because, you know, if they want to increase, they either want to increase rents or they're kicking me out because they want to, you know, rehab the house and increase rents. And you could rent a house, according to Grant Cardone's advice, 
you rent a house, you raise your family there, you have all these memories there, and then the landlord kicks you out. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe you want that to be your forever home, but you're at their mercy yeah. of their decisions. Maybe they want to liquidate their assets. Maybe they're at retirement age, so they want to stop being a landlord. Yeah. Maybe they want to kick you out and raise the rent so a new tenant can come in. Maybe they just don't like you anymore and they're trying to get you out. So there, there's all different reasons. So do you really want to live your life at the mercy of someone else's choices? Yeah. Or do you want to have control of your own domain? Yeah. The rent increases happen because of inflation. That's just the way it happens. Rent always increases yep. because of inflation. Where again, when you're locked into a fixed rate, it's not going to affect you the same way. Your basic daily expenses will be affected and all that, but your regular payment every month will not be affected. Yep. And the cool part is your payment, there is an end date on your payments as a owner. There's an end date. Now you're going to have taxes and you're going to have insurance to pay for after that if you choose to keep insurance, but you're going to have regular payments there. But the lion's share, your mortgage payment, there's an end date. As a renter, there's never an end date. Right. So if you look at it over the course of your lifetime, if you rent your entire life, you will throw way more money down the toilet than if you own that house. Because there will be... So we just paid off that house I told you about that I bought in 1999, yep. right? Paid sixty five or $75,000 for that house. We just paid it off last month because our payment was $1,000 a month. And we paid an extra $500 in the principal every month starting about 10 years ago or something like that. We started just paying 500 bucks extra and we knocked like 12 years off that mortgage. Yeah. So we were able to pay off a 30-year mortgage in about 17 or 18 years by putting a little extra money on the side of it. And yeah, people could do that now, right? I think the if math is it. if you make one extra principal payment per year, I think it knocks like seven years off the loan. Correct. I might be a little off on yep. my math there, but it's some, something like that. And we did a little more than that. We put an extra 500 bucks a month on it. We had it auto pay, so we didn't think about it and it paid that off faster. So now I'm done paying that mortgage payment in 18 years. Right. Own an asset that I paid sixty five thousand for, and that particular asset just appraised for two. What did I tell you, two eighty five, something like that. Yeah, which, close which, to three. Yeah, yeah close to three hundred thousand dollars that appraised for that we own outright. So that's one asset. Now, here is where my vision of being a real estate investor. That's a home. Why not buy ten homes like that? Mm -hmm. Why not buy? And now those aren't homes. Those become those become investments. Right. So it's the same concept, but now move it over to a Mortgage, same kind of thing. If you're buying single family homes and you have a mortgage payment that you're making on a regular basis that a tenant is paying for you, and now you're building wealth there as well. So when I saw my parents had an asset that they paid 12,500 bucks for, and I think in the 80s, it was around 110, $120,000. So it was 10X, it had 10 times its value in 30 years. Now it's worth probably close to $300,000, right? It keeps, it keeps going. But they paid 12,500 bucks for it. I thought to myself, why wouldn't I want to buy five yeah. or 10 or 20 of those or a hundred of those? Or e even if it's your own home though. So, so like that house that we just talked about, you bought in 99, you lived there for many years. Many years. Before you moved out. And now our so, son, now our son lives there. He rents from us. There. He rents well below market value, yes. but he rents there. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but that house, you can take a home equity loan on, and then you can use that to invest in other properties. So going, you know, like going in reverse from when we first started, you were saying how, you know, if you rent, you don't have to pay for all the repairs, roof, hot water heater, all that kind of stuff. So you can use that money to invest. But the same is true as if you own your home, because you can take a home equity loan out. We have many students that do that. Yeah. Many of our community members do that. That that's how they invest in real estate because they have so much equity in their house. Yep. And the other thing that I want to and don't forget that they get that money out tax free, right? Because it's a loan, right? And you got to pay it back, but it's a but it's a loan, yeah. Right. So there's so many benefits to home ownership as well. And I don't think that we should also or we shouldn't forget to mention there's pride in ownership. Is Very there much. is there pride in renting? No, none at all. But there is pride in ownership. Yeah. And I think that has a value on it that you can't put a dollar figure that, on. That's a really good thing we should talk about. I think it's, you know, for us, we we bought our home down in Florida on the beach and it's a beautiful home. Mm -hmm. And so now when people come down there, we have that pride factor and it makes you feel good. Yeah. And it makes other people go, okay, they, they're doing something right in their life. So if you want to be an influencer, you want to get out there and do that, you want to have a nice place you can bring people to, you know, if, if people say, where do you live? Well, I live down there on, uh, you know, Jackson Boulevard and I live in an apartment. Okay, how successful are you? Right. Right. There's this perception of what kind of success you have if you rent where you live. It just doesn't it it doesn't make people feel like you're very stable. You're not really investing in the community, right? You don't feel like you're you can just up and leave any second. So there's a lot to be said I, for that. I think that's a little bit of a slippery slope there though, because I, I do think that Why? In, well, in our day, maybe, maybe that was true. But I think there's so many communities now that there's young professionals and there's, you know, cities and there's communities where they're, yeah. they're 
that that that's a little different perception. But, but you but tell me I'm wrong. You can you could get up and leave tomorrow if you're in a rent situation. Yes. And your and your lease is up. You could legally just leave. Or if you, even if your lease wasn't up, you said, "Eh, I just want to leave." You leave. It's done. You, yes, you, you're, I'm, you're, I'm, you're but, a you're flight risk. <laughs> but the connotation you're putting on people, I don't think is fair. What? You're saying, well, you're not successful if you rent. I didn't say that. I didn't say you're not successful if you rent. You just want to fight this whole episode, don't you? <laughs> I, no, I'm not saying you're not successful. I, I don't think you feel as proud if you bring somebody back to your apartment or the house you rent as opposed to the home that you buy. I don't know that you, I don't know you have the same amount of success that you feel inside of you. And I don't think that people perceive you as being successful. You may be very successful, but you know, you may not be perceived if you rent an apartment. I think in or some places house. that's probably true. In some places that's probably if true. You're, but if in, you're running a home on the places, ocean, it's different. If you, in other places or in other communities where that's like the, the way of life, you know, if you live in downtown Chicago in a nice place or, you know, New York City in a penthouse suite. All right. So let's talk about it. So, so let's say that, that you decide to go dating, which might be today, the way you're talking to me. <laughs> so let's say you go out on a date and you may have to because I'm going to kick you out. Rid of me. So let's say that you go out on a date and you, you date a guy and you go back to his place, this nice place. You go, wow. Wow, you own this house? He goes, no, no, I rent it. You're going to feel differently about that guy than if the guy says, no, I own this. Tell me you wouldn't feel differently. Well, how many does he rent? Oh, my God. <laughs> Never a straight answer with you. <laughs> Has to do with pride. Anyway, I think we should wrap this episode up and talk about it. But I think the bottom line is that ownership, in my opinion, is the best way for average, everyday people to put money aside Agreed. forcefully. Because if you pay rent, you're just pissing it down the toilet. If you pay it's rent- It's like a forced savings account. You're because making of the equity me wealthy. You're it's true. I'm, yeah. a, I'm, a, I'm a real estate investor. You're making Grant wealthy. You're making yep. all the other investors that we know out there that buy real estate. You are building their wealth. You are throwing money down your own toilet while we're using your money- to pay off our mortgages, and which that's exactly, I'll do every day of the week. That's exactly how we think of our rental portfolio. Yeah. We, we, you know, we would drive by, people wouldn't even know who we were. We'd take our kids to school and we would drive by and wave at the people outside. Love them. Keep paying the rent, baby. Keep paying the rent. Yep. So that's- Paid that's, on my mortgage. I think once you figure out that you get your own house and get, start, start with having some of your own money go aside. And there's something magical about opening your eyes five or 10 years later and saying- because somebody will send you a notification saying, here's your estimated equity. Yeah. I'll, I'll never forget the first time I got that. Someone said, here's your estimated equity if you want to access it. And I had like 40 grand equity in my house. And I was like 31 years old. And yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. I, I hadn't saved 40 grand. Right. I didn't have a discipline to save 40 grand in my 20s. I didn't, I didn't know how to do that. I was, try, I was kind of hand them up. But I had equity because I was paying a mortgage that in that same amount of time became equal to what I would have paid for rent. And then soon after became less than what I would have paid for rent because I was locked into a fixed rate mortgage. Yep. And that's how you build wealth with real estate investing. So I would- That be, I can agree with you on. We finally found something in this episode <laughs> that we agree on. So I would just be careful giving people bad advice, Grant. Don't tell people that a home is a bad investment because for some people, that's the only investment they're ever going to have. That concludes this episode of the Fearless Future podcast. If you want to hear Glenn and I fight some more, make sure that you like this video. And for more content, subscribe to our channel and turn on those notifications so you don't miss the next blow up.